Good morning. Welcome. This is the Gospel of Joy. I am Reverend Josh Knappenberger, the pastor at St. James UCC in Allentown, PA on 15th Street. And if this is your first time with our community, it's a blessing to meet you. And I hope you find the Gospel of Joy uplifting enough to come back tomorrow. And if not, I hope to give you enough laughs to get through today. You can check out the YouTube channel for any videos you may have missed if you want to see more. Uh, all the videos from the past are up there with all the jokes and all the buddies and all the messages. So you can um, go there and see, see, how, see what you think of them. And don't forget to tag, tell, and share your, your friends uh, with this video if they need a laugh. If they don't need a laugh, just tag, tell, and share them. Share it with them so that they, they can know that if, if they need some joy in their life one day, they can come here and get it. Good morning, Joni. It's great to have you with us. Good morning, Margaret. It's great to have you with us, too, this morning. Hope you both are doing well. And also, as you all know, in front of uh, St. James UCC on 15th Street in Allentown, there is a lending library box for the community, book box for the community. It's for children's books. You can, if there's a book there, you can take it. If you have a book you want to donate, you can leave it there. Uh, but it's, it's meant for the community. It's a ministry we do to the, to the community that the, that the church is in. And we give thanks for our ability to keep that ministry going during this time. All right, I got buddies with me. Let's see. This one transforms into an osprey plane, which if you don't know what an osprey plane is, they're, they're, they are the planes that uh, the propellers, they point upwards to take off like a, a helicopter, and then uh, the propellers point forwards so they can fly like a plane. So that, that's what he transforms into. And he has a pretty cool, pretty cool function. Um, the propellers, they spin. <laughs> and uh, he, he's a Decepticon. His name is Incinerator. And uh, he's pretty cool. He doesn't have hands. He just has propellers, but they do spin, as I said before. So he's a pretty neat one. And I also have... This one, this is a Decepticon as well, a bad guy. His name is Stockade. He's got big ape arms. They hang below to below his knees. But uh, he transforms into a, mid, uh, a mid-size SUV. But his arms hang to below his knees because, I don't know if you can see, but his... His fist punches out of them, and they need the space in the arms to, uh, to to have the to have the fist punching out. So anyway, um, he's a pretty cool one too. Uh, he's he's a Decepticon as well. Uh, this week, this week I think we're gonna have uh, something special with the, with the buddies, but you'll have to tune in to see. Um, but yeah. So anyway, those are my buddies for today. They're here to to keep my anxiety down and they're doing a pretty good job these days but i know you enjoy seeing them so that's them good morning fred it's good to have you with us as always all right now we all have traditions and we're gonna live out the most important one one of the most important traditions of our faith later through communion and i hope you have your um your bread and your juice so you can take part of that sacrament with us. But we all have them. We all have family traditions. We all have national traditions, Memorial Day, July 4th. And for family traditions, we get together for the holidays. We pray before mealtimes. We have personal traditions. I have certain traditions I live out when I wake up in the morning. I'm sure you all have traditions you live out when you wake up in the morning. Uh, but over the past few months, many of those traditions have had to be adjusted or put to the side for another year. Now, it's hard to change traditions in any time. 
including times of crisis like we're in now. We want to see our families on the holidays. We want to be in church every Sunday with our church communities. But let's think about traditions for a second, though. We cling to, to, to traditions because they're meaningful to us. Because the memories of our traditions inspire us and spark our emotions. And they're anchors in our daily lives, which our daily lives are just changing. E even when we're not at home, our daily lives, our lives are constantly in flux. We have new projects at, at work. We, we meet new people all the time. And, you know, our traditions are our anchors. They are our bedrocks. We, things we can count on. But they inspire and spark our emotions. For Christmas and Easter, I remember getting together for at my Grammy and Pappy's house. I don't remember a lot of the presents I got for Christmas in that house, but I remember some. But what I remember most is the whole family gathered together in that living room, that small living room. It was a, it was a small living room for all of us, but we all gathered in it, and we gathered together in love. Now, my pappy died while I was in junior high, but the tradition continued. My Grammy sold the house years later, and so where to gather then? Well, we found another place to gather in love, but we had to adjust our tradition or risk losing it entirely. Now, Jesus forced change to many of the traditions of his day in order to protect those he loved. He picked grain on the Sabbath. He cleared the money changers from the temple because they were price gouging. He healed people on the Sabbath. These all went against traditions of the time. But he healed on the Sabbath because someone needed help. Now he broke all these traditions to protect those he loved. Now these traditions were still meaningful to, pe to many people, but in a lot of ways, these traditions were causing undue pain and hardship to others. Today, as we live in the COVID-19 coronavirus um, time, we've been forced to adjust our traditions to protect those we love from pain and hardship. That doesn't make the adjustments any easier to accept than Jesus' adjustments were for the Pharisees to accept. It does make them just as important to change and find a way to adjust them and do them differently. To the Jews who thought keeping the Sabbath as a day of total rest, they, some of them thought it was a meaningful tradition. They still kept the Sabbath, and they still keep it today, and that's okay. If a tradition is kept after a hardship because the meaning comes from within, ourselves it is worth keeping and those traditions will return i promise you all our traditions will return we will have holidays with our families again we will tap in to those feelings of love and memories that we have that inspires us to keep these traditions and i know this because of the hope I share with you all in Jesus Christ. And you all know that hope, so say it with me, whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, Marie and Michael. Good morning, Bonnie. It's great to have you all with us. Okay. I have some funnies for us this morning. Don't forget to comment and tell me which, which jokes you like best. Get some conversation going. So we have some long ones, so I don't have as many, but that's okay. That's okay. All right. This one is entitled, Then There Was Sister Annie. Last Sunday, Annie's pastor challenged his congregation, challenged his congregation to be aware of opportunities to testify for Jesus. Now, Annie was certainly known for her faith and her boldness in talking about the Lord. She was known to stand on her front porch and for the benefit of her atheist neighbor shout, Praise the Lord! Resulting in her godless neighbor to response, 
there ain't no God. When hard times set in, Annie stood on her porch and prayed. Praise the Lord. Please, God, send me some groceries. The next morning, she found a large bag of groceries on her porch, which caused her to shout, Praise the Lord! On cue, her neighbor jumped out from, from the bushes and cried, Hey, don't give God the credit. I brought those groceries. He didn't. Annie laughed and jumped down, clapped her hands, and shouted, Praise the Lord! He not only sent me groceries, but he made the devil pay for them! Oh, yeah, good morning, John. It's good to see you. Good to have you with us, too. I, I forget that sometimes the couples watch. Uh, but, yeah, he made the devil pay for the groceries. That one's pretty funny. All right, this one's entitled Lay Advice. A successful layman was in a great deal of business trouble. In no uncertain terms, the enterprise was failing. Even though he put in, put in every penny he had and the bank had, he owed everybody. It was so bad he contemplated suicide. As a last resort, he went to a pastor and with many tears asked for help. When the businessman finished his story, his pastor said, here's what I want you to do. Take a beach chair and your Bible and head down to the beach. When you get there, take the beach chair and your Bible and sit at the water's edge. Next, you shall open your Bible. The wind will rifle through the pages. But finally, the breeze will die down and settle. Look down at the page and read the first thing you see. From that, you will know what to do. A year later, the businessman went back to the pastor and brought his wife and children with him. The man was in a new custom-tailored suit. His wife wore a mink coat, and the children looked like fashion plates. The businessman pulled out an envelope stuffed with money and gave it to the pastor as a thank you gift. The pastor recognized the businessman and was curious. You did as I suggested. Absolutely, replied the businessman. You went to the beach. Absolutely. You sat in the beach chair with your Bible in your lap. Absolutely. You let, you let the wind go through the pages until, until it stopped. Absolutely. And what were the first words you saw on the page? Chapter 11. <sighs> That's funny. I don't care who you are. That's funny right there. Okay, so, uh, all right. Fred Gutierrez of Lake Home, Louisiana, told this story to a columnist, Smiley Anders of the Baton Rouge Advocate. My wife and I were caring for Olivia, a four-year-old girl, when her single mom worked. One Sunday, we took her to Mass at St. John of the Cross. There were two celebrants, a priest, priest of average stature and a deacon who was somewhat overweight. When the priest began his hom homily, the deacon went to sit on the other side of the altar. Soon, Olivia began fidgeting and standing tall in the pew to look around in front of us. I asked if anything was wrong. I'm looking for the fat Jesus, she replied. That was sent in by Jeff Totten, Lake Charles, Louisiana. And this is a blooper. One Sunday, the pastor went into the pulpit wearing a pair of new bifocals. The the reading portion of the glasses improved his vision considerably, but the top portion of the glasses didn't work so well. In fact, he was experiencing dizziness every time he looked through them. He explained to the congregation that the new glasses were causing problems. I hope you will excuse my continually removing my glasses. You see, when I look down, I can see fine, but when I look at you, it makes me sick. <laughs> that was sent in by Reverend Dr. Carl R. Kraft of Dover, Delaware. Yeah, we got to be careful of those bloopers sometimes. Uh, I got some cartoons for you. 
So if I can find them here. All right. So we got some people sitting in a pew for church. And one kid says to another kid, God is all knowing, sort of like your mom. Yep, that's pretty much it. And then there's one down here where it says it's got two people sitting in the pews and two policemen behind him. The policemen look pretty mad. And uh, one of the people in the pew says, uh-oh, it's the cell phone police. Now, there's actually sort of a, a funny twist on this. Uh, I was at the Penn Northeast Conference uh, Vital Vitality Days, they called them, Vitality Days Workshop. And the, a man named Mike Piazza was giving the workshop, and one of the stories he told a lot was about cell phones in church and how, he changed, how his concept and um, attitude towards them changed throughout his his ministry. In the beginning, when he saw people on their cell phones texting in church, he was offended because I spent all week on this sermon and you're on your phone not paying attention. And he told that to his congregation one day and in the receiving line someone told him, did you know that I was tweeting about how good your sermon was? So now he's okay with it because he he likes people tweeting about his sermons. And I think that's that's an important twist when we think of cell phones in church. Uh, important to keep in mind that people aren't always distracted by uh, by the cell phones that they have in church. Okay. Uh, will you pray with me? And remember, this will be... Uh, not only a, a prayer like we normally have, but it will also be a prayer of confession to prepare for our communion that we will have. Lord God, we give you thanks for traditions. We give you thanks that you put these traditions in our lives to be anchors and bedrocks for us, that we will always have a point, a fixed point to which we can return and to which we can no, we will feel loved and love in return. We ask that you help us to keep these traditions once, once the world goes back to normal and once we can see each other again. Lord, we also ask for your forgiveness and mercy as we have not been able to adjust some of our traditions as they've needed to. And instead we have lived in anger and sadness. Forgive our anger. Alleviate our fears. Show us the mercy that comes through, your, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may be cleansed and that we may know your love and feel it completely and wholly. Amen. Now, as we do every Sunday here on the Gospel of Joy, we will share communion. If you do not have your bread and your juice or your wine in front of you, you may go get it now. And I'd like to remind you, as I do every week, that all people who profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and wish to sit, share in this sacrament and uh, be a part, part of it with us, be a part of the body of Christ with us, may partake. And every week, I show you my communion kit that's in front of me. And so, let us pray. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and the gift of life, and for your abiding love which brings us close to you the source of all blessing. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. 
We thank you, especially that in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those whom Jesus loved. We rejoice that in a perfect victory over the grave, you raised Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church, by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. With the faithful in every place and time, we praise with joy your holy name. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. We remember, O God, that on the night of betrayal and desertion, your son Jesus Christ gathered the disciples, took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, and bless us that as we receive them at this table, we may offer you our faith and praise. We may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue faithful in all things. In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Come, for all things have been made ready. This is the body of Christ, and it has been broken, that we might find our wholeness. Take and eat. And this is the blood of Christ, poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. Take and drink. And now our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, keep and preserve us now and into eternal life. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us give thanks for what we have received this day. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray when we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. It was a blessing to have you here, whether you returned to us, or whether this is your first time. It's always a blessing to have you all with us at the Gospel of Joy. Don't forget to tag, tell, and share with your friends this video if they need a laugh or even if they don't because they may know someone who needs a laugh that you don't know. And that's important. Uh, 
Remember, keep healthy, keep safe, keep laughing, and remember to do one thing that gives you joy every day. Find one thing that gives you joy every day and do it. That is one of the most important things right now and at all times, but right now, especially when we are surrounded by so much um, uncertainty. And uh, thank you for sending me your ideas for the daily message. They're starting to dry up. So if you have anything you're struggling with that you want to hear me address in the daily message, uh, you can let me know in the comments. You can, um, uh, <laughs> you can send me a private message. If you have my phone number, you can text me with it. Uh, I want to know what's going on with you so that if I can address it and not just saying stuff you don't care about. Um, so yesterday we had a message for kids. We had another kid skit with my, with my buddies, and I think we're going to have another one this, this Saturday. So uh, if you have kids, kids with you, have them watch on, um, on, on Saturday because we're going we're gonna to have another kid skit. We're going to have communion next Sunday as we always do. Uh, don't forget to be giving what you can when you can to your church. I know it's a tough time, but our churches, are, our buildings still need maintenance. Our pastors are, your pastors are still working. So be sure to give what you can when you can, and that way you will have a church to go back to when, when the stay-at-home order is, is finished. And I am here at 10.30 every morning for the duration of this stay-at-home order. And... I uh, will see you tomorrow. And now may God keep you in the stitches of laughter and love today, tomorrow, and into eternal life. Amen. God bless. See you tomorrow.